many in this season are ready to sing joy to the world. Whether this is the first Christmas without someone we love, or we are still hurting from loss or suffering for a long time, we gather this evening as darkness comes to worship God in the midst of mourning. We gather to shed tears if they come, to hold hands if they are available, and to join our voices with one another and our forebears in the faith who still cry out, how long? And so we pray. Come Holy Spirit, comfort us and all who mourn this night. Give us strength to grieve as we must. Help us receive your healing in the midst of our pain and find new order after the chaos of loss. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Today on this evening in Advent, we gather to acknowledge our pain and to be open to a glimpse of the light of Christ. And so we light the Christ candle. This flicker of light will burn throughout the service, symbolizing for us the light of Christ that shines and can be extinguished by no darkness. May the words, the music, and the silence, and the flames of candles open a channel in your heart to the warm engulfing love of God. Pray with me. God of mercy, hear our prayer this Advent for ourselves and our families who live in the painful memories of loss. We ask for the strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We look for the light but find darkness, for brightness but walk in gloom. Come, gracious God, come in quiet hope. Come in gentle assurance and tender mercy. Come with healing to make us whole. We ask these things in the name of your Christ who shares our life in joy and sorrow, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen. As we light four Advent candles throughout the season, tonight we light four candles to help us remember both our pain and the hope of our faith. We light these candles to remind us that no darkness can banish the light of Christ from our lives. This first candle we light to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their face, their voice, the memory that binds them to us in this season. I invite those participating to pick a candle in this service that represents the loved one you are missing. Our God of loving grace brings healing in the light of God's love. Let us pray. God, Refresh, restore, and renew us, and lead us into your future. Amen. This second candle we light to redeem the pain of our loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs, the loss of health. We pause to gather up the pain of the past and offer it to God 
asking that from God's hands we might receive the gift of peace. I invite anyone who wishes to focus on a candle in this service, enable it to mark a loss or disappointment in your life, and to ask God to shine light upon your situation. Let us pray. God, refresh, restore, and renew us, and lead us into your future. Amen. This third candle we light to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember these past weeks and months, the disbelief, the anger, the downtimes, the memories shared, the hugs and handshakes of family and friends, all those who have stood with us. We pause to remember and give thanks for all the support we have received. I invite anyone who wishes to focus on a candle in this service and to give thanks for those who have supported and comforted you during your dark time. If you are comfortable doing so, say the person's name aloud, that, that the name would be lifted to God in this moment of light and thanksgiving. Let us pray. God, we remember your promise that the light shines in the darkness and that the darkness will never extinguish it. This fourth candle is lit to remember our faith and the gift of hope which the Christmas story offers to us. We remember that God, Emmanuel, is with us through the loss of those we love and the frightening and disappointing events of our lives. God is the light, and in God there is no darkness. We have invited people who wishes to remember a person they have lost to come forward and light a candle. As Pastor George lights candles, we will say the names of loved ones we know about and we'll light several extra for those of you adding a name at home. Say the name of your loved one aloud that we may offer this sorrow or this precious memory together in this moment of light and remembrance. Gwen, Shirley, Marion, Bob, Bill, Jim, Alice, Ruth, Linda, Wanda, Steve, Nick, Becky, Ed and Shirley, Lee, Joyce, Tammy, Howard, John, Ed.
Let us pray. God, surround those we have loved and lost with your eternal love. Amen. As we celebrate Christmas this year, may we have hope, believing that God can bring light into our darkness, that sorrow and the hurts of our lives will pass. They will not disappear, but they will be healed. Let us pray. You are the light of the world. Be light in our darkness, O Christ. We pray for ourselves, our loved ones, and for those peace proclaimed by the Christmas angels to come throughout the whole world. God of great compassion and love, listen to the prayers of these, your people. Grant to all, especially the bereaved and troubled ones this Christmas, your blessing. In this special time in the service, we have had people that emailed in prayers. We have people mail in prayers, text in prayers, call in prayers. People have known about the service that's happening on the 21st of December, the longest night. And they've asked us to hold their loved ones in prayer. And so I will announce a prayer and then we'll sing the refrain that you hear behind me. And as we're singing together, just recognize that we're holding someone into God's light when they need it the most. Gina is praying for a teenage students learning at home. They are feeling a great sense of loss with no sports or extracurricular activities. Some are feeling hopeless. Some are feeling grief. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Peggy and Jerry are calling us to prayer for friends that are missing their loved ones this Christmas. Claudia is missing her husband, Bill. Linda, her husband, Bob. Carol is missing her husband, Jim. Bev is missing her husband, Steve. The Davis family who are missing Linda, a wife and a mother and grandmother. And Dave who is missing his wife, Becky. This grief is going on in the lives of the Fries. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Come and listen to me. Carolyn is calling us to prayer. She is grateful to God for her parents, Ed and Shirley Hogerman, who have been deceased, but she misses them throughout Christmas. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call answer me, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. Nora would have us pray for those who are missing Tammy Topham and Linda Davis. We know that's family members and church members and, and people all over the world. So we sing. 
invites us to pray for herself and for John as they navigate the health journey that they are on together in this part of their lives. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call and Answer me, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. Jean has asked us to pray for months now. Her daughter Kathy is in a coma, and she's slowly coming out of it. And those prayers are working. Let's continue to be in prayer as we support Jean and, and Kathy and the whole family that are going through this. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Christy invites us to hold Shirley Lynch, Marion Cross, and their families as we come together in remembrance of those who have passed and in support of those who survived. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. Carolyn would like us to lift up those who are struggling through hard times tonight, naming Bob and Helen Gross in particular. But let's also name those who own restaurants those who teach students, those who are nurses and first responders, those who are afraid and at home and isolated. We know that there are plenty of people with hard times. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Judy is calling us to pray to our Lord for those in our congregation and beyond that are undergoing breast cancer treatment. So many cancers, so many heartaches. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer, oh Lord, hear my prayer, come 
men listen to me. Christy Zane would like us to pray for a Christmas miracle. She is experiencing persistent and chronic excruciating pain in her foot that leads to her back and her, and her leg. And it's all happened after surgery and the, the recovery could be a, a year for all those in chronic pain. Hear the prayers of your people, O God, forgiving our sins and granting us and all for whom we pray the sure and certain knowledge of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with us, with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The scripture today is from Romans chapter 8, and I'll start at verse 14. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. Just consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared to the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. 
For the creation was subject to futility, not of its own will, but because of the will of the one who subjected it. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we're waiting for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is not seen, or that hope that is seen, is not hope. For, we, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what is not seen, we wait for it with patience. So I'm talking to you, the children of God, the co-heirs with Christ. When we let that settle in and really understand what it means, it truly is a blessing we could never imagine. Because adoption was not what we think of today where a small child gets picked up because they will fit into a family well. Um, in, a, in the Roman age, in the first century, adoption was something that happened to full-grown people. People that maybe were slaves or associates of some landowner that had no heirs at all. And that landowner decided that instead of just going away and letting all of their possessions go up into flames or the dust, that they would pick an heir. So when somebody got chosen to be adopted, the landowner would have to go into the public square with all of the other landowners and, and pull the person he was adopting forward and, and lay his hand on him and, and say a blessing out loud that this is my child. Can you imagine being adopted like that by God? Being a co-heir to something that you never were an heir to before. This is what adoption means. This is where hope comes because we can't see something like that happening. We know that to hope for something like that happening is to hope with patience. We hope with patience about our stay-at-home orders, and we hope with patience about the businesses that are failing around us, and we hope with patience about the people that we know that are grieving and in and, and sorrow. We hope with patience for all of those who are overworked and for those who are over, overly at risk. We hope with patience for a world to, to settle into a loving groove. We hope with patience for peace, peace that can start anywhere, even with me. We hope with patience all the time, and we continue to hope because we know that God has made promises, promises that come true in the birth of an infant, promises that come true when we walk Jesus walk and live Jesus life. Jesus was not beyond suffering and neither are you and me. But Jesus rose past suffering. Jesus rose into living and, and so can you and me. So know that God sent us the light, the light of the world that cannot be extinguished and that this light will never be defeated by darkness because this light is meant to overcome darkness. This is the word of God for the people of God, and may it bless you as you go into this long, dark night. Amen. I just want to reflect for a moment on the fact that Jesus didn't just leave us here, but Jesus left us here with the Holy Spirit, and he left us here with an act of communion. He wanted us to remember that when we taste the loaf or drink from the cup, that we remember Jesus who was on his knees washing the feet of his disciples, who had already healed the sick, who had already raised people from the dead, who had already freed prisoners and, and uplifted the poor. We know that, that this Jesus wanted to Bring us to a table of fellowship and say that you belong, that this bread is for you, that this cup is for you, that together we give thanks to God because God is the one who brings us peace. And God is the one who adopts each one of us. 
And so I will come to you now and offer you in a visual way the bread and the cup. And I just ask you to give thanks. The body of Christ broken for you. The cup of Christ brings hope to you. You now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. May God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us and keep us this night and always. Amen. Well, you have seen the Savior. You're invited to enjoy this moment, to endure this moment, to, to be in prayer for as long a moment as you need to. You can talk to a pastor by just calling the church or emailing us, and I'd be happy to give you a call. I will be available. So go now into this longest night knowing that the love of Christ 
and of his people is a love without end. Amen. Did you? 